All right, everybody, welcome to the weekly, sorry, this is our, my monthly show called Ecomazon, which I do once a month. It's completely free to the world. Um, and each month I cover a different topic related to e-commerce and selling on Amazon. Um, so these are, this will be posted later online. So if you're watching this on Facebook uh, replay or if you're watching this on YouTube, um, thank you so much. Please leave your comments. Please like, subscribe, follow, share, all that good stuff. Okay, so tonight's topic is, hey Michelle, um, thanks for tuning in. Tonight's topic is researching products for Q1. So right now it is October. Why am I thinking about Q1? Well, a lot of people, depending on how you source, products you're selling, you've already basically got everything you're going to sell for Q4 already. It's done. Um, it's very late in the game now to be getting new products to sell this for, for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. Now, I know some people out there do what's called arbitrage, where you're buying stuff in stores and selling it online. It's definitely not too late for that. But if you're doing wholesale or private label or bundling or anything where you're creating new products, then um, it's a little bit late for Q4, but it's definitely the perfect time for Q1. Now, in years past, when I do this Q1 research show, I talk about all the cool holidays in Q1. Um, and so I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and then I'm going to move on to some really cool data that I've got to share with you tonight, which is mind-blowing in my mind. So <clears throat> whatever Q we're in, Q1, Q4, the, the kind of gut reaction that a lot of us have is to sell holiday stuff for that holiday, right? So if you're in Q4, you're selling for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah. If you're in Q1, you've got Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year. You've got Valentine's Day, which is massive. Um, you have got St. Patrick's Day, which is also massive. Um, and so those are great holidays to sell for, but the problem is that a lot of that stuff once the holiday comes and goes is not really going to be sold again until the next time that holiday rolls around. So <clears throat> what some sellers like to do, this is certainly what we're doing with our business is focus on, so I sell products which people will buy all year round, but they buy more of as a gift. Um, so there's definitely an increase in sales from holidays, but it's not like a Christmas item. Um, now I know people that do great and I've done, I've sold a ton of holiday items in the past and I love it. But now that I'm getting really deeper into writing listings and really developing the products, I don't want to spend all that time for something that I can only sell for a month. Um, so if you are a bundler, you can do some great um, retail arbitrage or online arbitrage bundles for Q1. Um, Valentine's Day is huge. Um, Michelle says, and then you're stuck with it once the holiday passes, which is very true. Um, you can still, it's, there's still time to do wholesale for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to give you guys some great intel into what sold last year for Valentine's Day. So let me jump right into that. So this year has been a big year for me in really getting into data. Um, it's something I resisted for a long time because I have a good instinct for products. <laughs> so I could join a Facebook group or just understand a customer avatar and create products for them. And I tend to do a lot of bundles, which is where you combine products and they would just sell. But as Amazon's gotten harder, that has not worked as well. So I've had to learn more about data and I've had to learn more about pay-per-click and things like that. So some of the data I'm gonna share with you tonight comes from something called, a tool called Brand Analytics. Now Brand Analytics is a free tool that is only available to people who are brand or companies who are brand registered on Amazon. So if you have registered a brand with Amazon, you have a trademark and you registered it, you can get access to a tool called Brand Analytics. 
Now, brand analytics is so freaking awesome that if you like had to get brand registered just to get access to brand analytics, it would be worth it. Um, this is a tool, rumor has it, of course, I don't know for sure, that people used to pay $70,000 a month for access to this data. Um, I don't know if that's true, but bottom line, the data rocks. So I can't share my brand analytics screen with you because it's against my confidentiality agreement with Amazon. However, I'm going to share some of the data that I pulled for Q1 about what sold really well last year to, view, to give you guys some insight into what you might want to sell this year. If you have considered getting brand registered, then do it. Even if you have like an old trademark for something that you really don't plan on selling, then I would say brand registry is free. The, the part you have to pay for is the trademark. <laughs> so you have to pay the, the fees for the trademark. Um, if you already, some people have like a dead trademark or one that's still active, but they're not really actively producing products anymore for that. You can still register that if you need to like produce a product real quick with that logo on it or whatever, do it. And then what you have to do is request with Seller Central to add brand analytics to your dashboard. And it will show up under reports. So when you log into Seller Central reports, one of your report things will say brand analytics. Um, if your experience is anything like mine, what will happen is you will write to seller support and you say, hey, I would like access to brand analytics for brand registry. And they will say, we don't know what you're talking about. We've never heard of it. And then you say, oh, no, no, it's a thing. And then you argue with them like every day and then magically it appears in your dashboard. So they never admit that you were right, but uh, they do eventually add it to your dashboard. And I've talked to other members of our community who have had a similar experience. I think seller support is a little bit like a petulant teenager. They're never going to tell you you're right, but they might give you your way if you're lucky. Hello, Leslie, and welcome. Judy, welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in live. Okay, so I've got um, some interesting stuff I found about Q1. So the first thing I want to show you, sorry, I'm going to share my screen in just a second here, is I want to show you some of the best-selling products from last year, which really kind of amazed me. Um, and I, I sifted through this data to pull out the stuff that I thought was especially relevant to smaller businesses, meaning um, it's not a lot of licensed stuff. Like we all know Harry Potter sells well, that's not exactly a big revelation, but we don't all have a lot of ability to execute like getting our own branded Harry Potter products and not getting shut down. Now I do have an RA tip for you guys. So I'm pulling this listing up right now. This candle sold really well last year. <coughs> this uh, Yankee candle for 20, right now it's selling for $25, sold through the whole of Q1 last year. The search term that it sold for was large Yankee candle. So I don't know if it's actually larger than the other flavors. I'm guessing that because it's red, it's sort of carried over into Valentine's Day season. So I would suggest if you are somebody who does RA and you can get these things, especially if they go on sale after Christmas or whatever, this is a great product to sell into Q1. Um, and this data comes straight out of brand analytics. Um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting, sort of this is another holiday item, was um, this brand of cookie cutters was very popular for St. Patrick's Day. So shamrock cookie cutters was the search term. It had a huge amount of searches on Amazon Q1. Um, now, I don't... Uh, Brand analytics doesn't give you the number of searches, but it ranks them, and this ranked really well. So it's a, a, a massive amount of searches. For people looking for the term shamrock cookie cutters, and this is what they bought over 20% of the time, 26% of the time. Um, 
so yeah, you get this great data in, in there. So this particular product, um, 20 when it came up, 26% of the people that saw this product from their search shamrock cookie cutters clicked on it. And of those people, uh, something like, um, I'm trying to figure this out. It's, it came up twice, which is why it came about 30% of the people bought it. So uh, it was a lot. Sorry, I just messed up my spreadsheet here. Um, let me just reformat my column so I can see everything. And I will share this uh, spreadsheet with you guys in a little bit. And then I have a new thing that I'm gonna tell you about. Oh, come on, spreadsheet, sorry. It happens when I try to do too many things at once sometimes. Um, I just resized all my columns so they're really giant. So now I can't see anything. Okay, here we go. And apparently I deleted one of them. Okay, awesome. Okay. Uh, okay, I can't, I can't fix it right now. Okay, that's okay. Um, I still have great data for you. Okay, so this was the St. Patrick's Day. Let me keep going here. Um, all right, next I want to show you guys some of the stuff that sold that had really good conversion rates in Q1 that was not necessarily themed for any particular holidays. And some of these things really surprised me. Everything I'm gonna show you here, the reason I chose it, there was thousands of results, okay? The reason I chose these was because they were very popular and most of these are just private label brands. They're not mainstream brands. So it's very accessible. These would be great things for you to bundle like those shamrock cookie cutters, you can make some great bundles with those. Um, so I wanted to show you one of the best-selling snow shovels from last year. This was very interesting to me as well. Now, snow shovels are pretty tough to sell because um, they're big and heavy. They're definitely oversized. Um, I'm trying to keep up with the questions as well in the chat. Okay, so. Okay, so here's the shovel. Let's see here, can you guys see that? All right, so this shovel, you can see even right now, it has 174 rank in patio. So based on data, I was able to, to, to find this from Brand Analytics, and um, I just thought it was interesting because it's different, right? It has the two handles. So um, I wanted to also show you guys this bundle that sold really well. This is a cereal bundle. It came up under the search term cereal container. So if you put in cereal container, this is one of the top results. And this is, it's a bundle. It's just four containers, some, some labels and a pen. And it looks like they threw in some spoons as well, just to probably try to keep other people off their listing. But this is, you guys want to know the power of bundles. This is it right here. This bundle is a rank, has a rank of 287 in kitchen and dining. And this was one of the top selling bundles in Q1 of 2019. Um, so this has been selling well for a long, long time. Um, okay, I've got another one of the, these are just home, I, I did this under home and garden. So these are all home and garden items. So check out, this is another very popular item from Q1, which was the cat scratcher. That looks weirdly like a dog bone, I don't know. So um, the other thing that was really popular in Q1, these Space Saver laundry bags, cookbook stand. Um, and this one cracks me up. Let's see if, no, this wasn't, that does also crack me up, but. Um, let me go, uh, we have a dog hoodie, was very popular. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, we have a new section of our website called Winning on Amazon. For those of you who are already members of Scanner Society, you already have access to this. When you log into your account, now you'll have two things. You'll have your members area and you'll have Winning on Amazon. 
this is a senior level library. So this is not, it's not a lot of new newbie info. This is info for people that are already successful sellers who wanna grow. Um, and it's got a library of eBooks, it's got worksheets, it's got resources. So I'm gonna add this Q1 data to winning on Amazon. So all you have to do, um, and this is a, a free product, our group is paid, but this is free. Um, is go to the website scannersociety.com and on the homepage you'll see this winning on Amazon thing and you just click sign me up and it signs you up. It doesn't cost, you don't have to put in a credit card or anything. Um, and then you'll get access to this login area of our website and this Q1 data is going to be in there. So I've got the best selling St. Patty's Day products, home and garden. Um, okay, let me go back here to the dog hoodie. This was one of the best selling products in Q1 of last year. This is another private label product. Um, clothing storage was also really popular, which th these, this was all very surprising to me because I, in the past, have focused so much on like Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, but these were some of the top selling products in Q1 of this year. Um, and then this one just randomly surprised me. These all have very good conversion rates. So I sorted, for those of you who are into data, <laughs> I sorted the brand analytics data by things that had at least a 20% conversion. So that means that at least 20% of the people that looked at this product bought it. Um, so everything I'm showing you had at least a 20% conversion rate up to a 40% conversion rate. So this is a tatami mat. I had no idea these were so popular. This is not cheap either, but anyway, this is this was very popular in Q1. And then we have got dog sunglasses were also extremely popular in Q1. So this is all out of brand analytics, and I will go ahead and put this in our winning on Amazon product uh, probably tomorrow. Um, so if you're watching this after, after October 24th, it will be in there. Um, and you, you can just log in and take a look at the data yourself. Um, I wanted to show you, those of you guys who do arbitrage, the absolute best selling chocolate box last year for Valentine's Day was this Godiva chocolate box, the Saison. So if you can RA this and you want to sell Godiva, I don't know. Okay, now I don't do RA anymore, so I don't know anything about restrictions and stuff. I, I'm very out of the loop on that. But if you're approved to sell Godiva, this, and you can get it at a good enough price, this chocolate box sold really well, and it had a 20, almost a 25% conversion rate. So one in four people who looked at this just bought it for their loved one. Okay, so now I want to talk about some Valentine's gift searches that were really popular last year. Some of these surprised me. Now, I, I pulled out, uh, like we all know, gifts for her, gifts for him. I pulled out all the naughty stuff because I didn't really want to talk about that on this show. Um, but some of the things that surprised me were one of the top searches, teacher Valentine's gift. And that had that had surprising results. Like I was, I, first of all, I guess I'm just not a very nice parent because I've never given my child's parent teacher a Valentine's gift. But uh, I guess if you're like a way nicer person than I am, you could do that. <laughs> or maybe you just know somebody who's a teacher and so you're giving them a teacher Valentine's gift. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen with you again. Here's the data that I'm looking at right now. Um, and here is the, um, here's the teacher Valentine's gift that was the most popular one. And this is just a keychain. This is something you could make with like promotional private label, or you could totally get this private label in China. I'm not suggesting you exactly copy this. This is for a launching point for you. Um, but this was a really popular search. If you're looking for products to source for Q1, look for teacher Valentine's gifts baby Valentine's gifts. Um, and what I really liked about the baby Valentine's gift was that it's a book. 
And to me, that is like a big opportunity for a bundle. If you could get that book cheap enough, you could do a really nice gift set with that book in it you already know is popular. So this book, I don't, for some reason, I don't have the ace in. Um, this book was one of the, here it is. So if you had a wholesale source for this, could buy it. You can make a really nice Valentine's Day bundle. And this is something that would probably sell all year round because everybody loves their baby all the time and wants to give them gifts. So baby Valentine's gift was really popular. Um, a lot of people searching for supplies. So I took most of those out. Uh, gift bags, red bags, black bags, white bags were super popular. Um, I also thought it was interesting uh, for those of you who do arbitrage, Harry Potter gifts, Valentine's gifts, very popular. Um, gift bags for kids. Those are just bags. Like that was, I thought it was going to be gift bags, like a bundle of gifts, but it's actually just literally bags. Um, so these bags are selling for $19. I've seen these, I don't think they cost more than $4, I'm gonna say, for 100 of these. So this is a bolo right here. You heard it live, it's a bolo. These Valentine's bags are super popular, and if you can get this exact thing and you can put them on this listing, then go for it. I would take the Hershey's Kisses off the listing because they don't come with it. <coughs> but that's not, that's just me. So these were just some of the really popular gifts, Valentine's gifts in Q1 of 2019. And I was really surprised that um, it was not more popular. Now, I did take some out, the kind of ones we've all heard of, Valentine's for her, Valentine's for him. Um, the other thing I thought was really interesting were the Spanish searches. So people are searching for kind of a mix of Spanish and English where they're putting in San Valentin gifts. So they're, they're mixing languages. These phrases were very important and searched for a lot and they converted well. And this is just a, I don't know what this is, the lamp. So this would be an, a chance where, now see right now it does not have good rank, but this sold well last Q1. So, you know, this would be an opportunity for you to kind of take that data, the San Valentin, and maybe put it into your own. Um, if you think you have a product similar to that, that you could um, use that keyword in your listing. Um, and then let me go ahead and show you the other one that came up under the Spanish search, which was this listing. So, you know, so much of the products I've sold in the past for Valentine's Day were candy. I also found this data very interesting that there's just a lot of other things people give us gifts besides candy. Um, and so you don't have to worry about expiration dates and stuff. And then I just did some search on gifts. So I was like, well, if you're not buying a Valentine's Day, what kind of gifts are people buying in Q1 that are popular and that are converting well? So these are all converting over, uh, they should be all over 20%. I think the column that I accidentally deleted had the 20% in it. So just ignore this number over here. That's click share, but these are still very popular products but we've got graduation gifts. People are buying those in Q1. Social worker gifts was really popular. Relaxation gifts for women. And then I thought this was weirdly specific. Eight-year-old boys gifts. Like that came up more than other ages. Um, sympathy gift. There was a lot of tea gift sets that came up. I deleted a lot of them so we wouldn't have a lot of duplication in this list, but that, that came up like at least six or eight times in the top list of gifts. And one thing that I did notice with the tea sets is they tend to be more majorly branded products, not so much private label. Um, but you know, there's definitely some RA opportunities in there. Um, 
Beard gifts are super popular now. Um, engagement anime. I was surprised by that. This is just a book, but you know, 70,000 is, that, that's the number of search rank. It's good, just let's just say it's good. Um, this is, it's a brand analytics number. Um, nine-year-old boys gifts. So apparently in Q1, we're getting a lot of eight and nine-year-old boys. Um, baptism gifts, chemotherapy gifts. Um, and, you know, be very careful if you're keywording for things like chemotherapy that what you're selling is really like natural and holistic and a really good gift for somebody who is having chemotherapy. Don't just put that keyword into any old listing, please. Um, baptism gifts are very popular. Chihuahua gifts were popular, and that actually came up in Google Trends, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, coworker gifts. And I was surprised to see Aquarius and Scorpion. I think I got the Aquarius gifts, which Aquarius happens, I think, in January. But enough people are buying astrologically based gifts that you can actually keyword your, your gifts for that. I never would have thought of that without this data. Um, I, I am somewhat into astrology and I have friends who are into it, but I've never bought somebody like a gift for their astrological sign, but I guess people do that. So um, romantic. And then we have alpaca gifts. I guess there's like a lot of people searching for that. I think I already pulled this one up. No, I don't have it. So the alpaca, it's just a mug. The other thing that this showed me is that as much as I feel like sometimes print on demand and some of these other things are super saturated, you can really see that some people have just done a great job capturing market share. Like this is just a plain black mug that changes. This might even be a gear bubble mug because they do this, they have the, they sell these things at color change and just based on the way that the, sh the pictures are done. But anyway, this is just a plain old mug. It's got a great rank and this sold really well in Q1. And then EMT gifts. This was another one that surprised me. This is so niche and so specific, but you've got people that are buying their, you know, special people in their life who are EMTs are buying them special gifts. Um, I guess it's like a, a graduation gift for an EMT graduate. And then this one cracked me up. The Scottish gifts is, it's an apron that makes you look like you're wearing a kilt. <laughs> I just think it's funny. This is print on demand. This is just like somebody printed this and that's it. Like, so there's still so much opportunity if you can do this research. Now I know not everybody has brand analytics. Um, I am gonna put this list in our winning on Amazon product on our website. Um, but I'm gonna show you some other tricks too to do research. Astronomy gifts, hippie gifts, um, godparent gifts from godchild. That's pretty specific. RN nurse gifts christening gifts, another baptism gift, and then gifts for runners. And I did pull this up because I thought it was funny. Sorry, it's here. Um, they have, it's just a book about pooping. I don't know what the deal is with running and pooping because I'm not a runner, but this is not necessarily a huge deal. It's just a book. You could probably make a bundle with a book like this. Um, if not, then there was another um, runner's gift as well that was really popular. And then Pitbull gifts. So that's brand analytic data. And so it just shows you that there's a lot of cool stuff selling in Q1. And it's not just all about Valentine's Day. Um, now, let me show you some other data because I know not everybody has brand analytics. As I mentioned, winning on Amazon will have this chart in it. But I did a little hunting on Google Trends. That was less helpful because it's just people are searching for junk, so you can't really tell. And I'm not, I don't use Google Trends a lot, so I may just not know how to use it well, but I couldn't find really good date-specific data. They did cover searches for the last year. I did a search for just Google Shopping, and these were the things came up. But none of this is particularly exciting. Like. 
unique gifts, wedding gifts, Valentine's gifts. So it's worth running through this just to make sure you've got all your keywords in your listing. But other than that, I didn't find it to be a huge source of data that was really helpful. Um, I did think this was interesting. They've got the breakout gift of the dachshund gifts, which we did see over here in, in Google Analytics as a popular gift. Oh no, that was Chihuahua. So it turns out that dachshund gifts are also popular. So, you know, that was a little, little bit of a um, inspiration there. And then I wanted to also show you this software called eRank. Now eRank is software that I discovered when I was learning how to do Etsy research for getting ideas from Etsy products for stuff to list on Amazon. And eRank is a tool that is designed for Etsy sellers. I like it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's only 10 bucks a month. <laughs> In the world of Amazon FBA, that is super affordable. Um, most of our research tools are way more expensive than that. Number two, I like it because, uh, and I actually talked to the guy who wrote the software, the owner of the product, really great guy. Um, talked to him and so they have data on, because he's trying to help Etsy sellers sell on other platforms if their products will translate well. And so he's got Amazon data, Etsy data, Google Shopping, Amazon Handmade, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace data. <coughs> that is awesome for Amazon sellers. And I don't know of any tools that I've seen that have that breadth of data that's designed for Amazon sellers. If you know one, put it in the comments, tell me all about it. But all the research tools I've seen are very focused on Amazon. So this is great because it covers multiple marketplaces. It's also great because I talked to him about where he gets his data. So this is the big thing. If you're not a dork like me, you may not know to ask this, but all these companies have this data, you know, software they sell us and we trust that the data is what it says it is, but it's not always, okay? Without naming names, I'm gonna tell you there's huge software companies that sell to Amazon sellers that are selling junk data. Um, so how do you know, if it's real, you ask, where do you get your data from? And they will tell you, and then you have to research where they say they get it from to see if that data is really shared. There's a lot of companies that tell you they're getting data from the Amazon API, but it's data that Amazon does not disclose. So where are they getting it from? They're either stealing it and using it against Amazon's wishes, which means it could get caught and shut down, or they're lying about where they're getting the data. So what did I like about eRank? He gets his data from a service he pays for, which pulls it from a large group of people who are just using the internet. They agree for some sort of compensation to share their search data with this company. And then the company shares the data with software companies like eRank. So the cool thing about this to me is that this is actually a product that's pulling data it's relevant to Amazon sellers, that is from a different source than any of the other software tools I've seen out there. Helium 10, Merchant Words, Viral Launch, um, Amazon Keyword Checker, none of those are pulling from just paid data. So it's a pretty cool product. And like I said, it's $9.99 a month. So even if you sign up for just a few months to get some great product ideas and then move on, it's totally worth it. It's got a great user community. So that's enough. I don't make money from E-Rank. I don't do affiliate commissions. So just so you know. So let me show you what I found. So I use some of the stuff that I found in Brand Analytics to, to do some comparison. And I also just did some other searching. But so this is eRank, it's just eRank.com. I do have the paid account. There's actually a lot of data that's available on their free version, so you can sign up for that first and see if it helps you. But what I did is one of the keywords that I put in was social worker gifts, because that came up in brand analytics as a popular gift search term in Q1. Um, now, if you didn't have brand analytics, you didn't know that term, you could just start to look up in Amazon Autocomplete for gifts and see what popped up. So if I put in gifts here, a whole bunch of stuff pops up. And then you can start typing gifts for, 
and see. You, so social worker doesn't come up, but I'm just saying there's other ways to find out uh, search terms to check for. Um, yeah, Judy says that the E-rank is like Nielsen ratings for online search. I think that's a good way to put it. So I just wanted to show you guys an example of what this would look like for something you might actually be searching for. So this is social worker gifts. So I just type this into, if you go under tools to keyword explorer, that's all I did. So check this data out, <laughs> okay? It's got an eBay summary of average searches for this term on eBay. It's got a search trend graph, which there wasn't a lot of searches for this according to this, so that's okay. I'm gonna show you another one that had more so you can see the comparison. Check out the market trends. You can actually see by marketplace, not just which ones were more popular, but when. So Amazon had spikes around April and December for Christmas. But check it out, like Etsy had steady, steady searches and so did Google Shopping. Oh, it has Google Shopping data too. So just really interesting data that you can pull from this tool. And then this is um, the Keyword Explorer again. And I did this like an hour ago and I already completely forgot what I did. Oh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> I looked up dog hoodie. <laughs> so it's right here, dog hoodie. And I hit search. And so this was a more popular term than the social worker one. So this has more stuff in it. So you can see that Etsy summary is here. Oh, did I say that was eBay before this? Oh, this must have had more stuff on eBay than Etsy. Oh, I see. Here we go. Let's check this out. So this is, never mind. Let's look here. So Etsy. Oh, they, you can even get a better summary if you click up here. I didn't even know that until just now. So I'm going to look on Amazon. Average searches. Now this data is based on this third-party data service. So it's a completely different place that they're pulling this from than any Amazon software that you may already subscribe to. So I think it'd be super cool if we did some comparisons to see uh, how they compare. But in general, the more information you have, the better. So here we go. Um, this has September data from 2019, because I'm shooting this video in October. But you can see the whole year. It shows you the peak times. We're in December. It shows you how much it peaked. It shows you the, the um, it by year. Um, you can look in other marketplaces, like Facebook Marketplace. Amazon Handmade, which by the way, if you're not a handmade seller, they're offering free professional. You don't have, if you qualify to be a handmade seller, you don't have to pay professional fees. Um, so you can really see some great data here about what's selling and when throughout the year. And you can see that this stuff does sell in Q1. Um, it has a peak around March. And of course, it's still coming down from the December peak here, but it peaks up again in March. I don't know what happens in March that everybody's buying dog hoodies, maybe springtime and their dogs are still chilly. Um, but you can see the whole year here just uh, mapped out by marketplace for this keyword. So this is really good data if you're trying to figure out what to sell in Q1. So let's say you were thinking about doing um, organic, chocolate heart, for example, um, then you could search this up and see what people put in. Um, okay, that was too specific. Let's just do organic chocolate. Did I break it? <laughs> okay. So here we have um, the Etsy summary there's not as much data on this, but you can still see most of the sales were on Amazon for organic chocolate. You can see the trends through the whole year. So this is a really interesting place to get data about what to sell throughout the year, including Q1. That isn't the same place that everybody else is getting their data. 
Um, and then I also wanted to show you, oh, this was not a thing I wanted to show you. That was just about Google Trends. So finally, I want to suggest that you sign up for our program, Winning on Amazon, which you go to my website, scannersociety.com, Winning on Amazon. It's free and you get access to a bunch of eBooks. You can learn uh, some great listing tips, how to do ASIN analysis, Amazon, how to use Amazon reports, uh, promotional product private label bundles, UPC and GTIN exemptions. It's a curated video collection. So we're getting to the point now where we have a lot of videos. So I've kind of curated these down to sort of um, not brand new sellers, uh, people who are professional sellers who have experience who want to grow and expand. And I keep adding new resources. Last week I added the emergency preparedness uh, checklist that you can fill out for your business. And this week I will add the Q1 data. So that's that. And we have an amazing group, which is our think tank called Scanner Society. And it's uh, about 500 plus sellers, about 550. They're all professional. They're not brand new. They're experienced sellers that do a variety of different kinds of sourcing. They're trying to build strong businesses. And we have just a great community. It's not competitive. It's not mean. It's not snarky. It's really nice. If you have questions, we help each other. You get good advice. And it's an incredible community. Um, and we also do weekly. I do a weekly training for that group, which is every Friday. So there's a library of trainings already available to you of, I don't know, probably 100 trainings. And then we do a new one every week. And then we also have uh, once a week, you can sign up for a coaching session with me. You can actually talk to me once a week <laughs> for free, but if you're in the group, you can talk to me once a quarter. It's included in your membership, and um, that's just $39 a month. Okay, so that is Q1 sourcing. So do you guys have any questions about that? Um, the, the lesson I'm really taking away from this, and this is one I've just personally incorporated into my business this year, is I'm trying to do better at sourcing products and bundles, which may peak during holidays, but which will still sell throughout the year. So I'm not just tied to one particular day. It's so tempting though, because I love making bundles and I see this stuff and I just want to put it together and sell it. Um, and so I use brand analytics, which is a free tool, but you have to be brand registered. So that's how you get access to that. And you have to ask for it from seller support. And I use eRank dot com um, they have a free level which you can sign up for it's a really powerful data tool it's designed for etsy sellers but i get so much great data out of it for amazon uh, product creators and sellers um, and then winning on amazon i think that's all my stuff so have we got any questions let me check the facebook feed here and then i will sign off and I don't see any questions. So I'd love to hear what kind of cool insights you had about sourcing for Q1. Um, I'd love to hear your tricks for sourcing for Q1. If you have a comment or question, please leave it. If you think what I said was dumb and you have a better idea, I'd love to hear that too. So <clears throat> thank you so much uh, for watching live. Thank you for watching the replay. Thank you for commenting. And thank you so much for being part of my community. I hope you have a great day. Bye.